Pacific was able to do a year ago, and right now the fans being acquainted with the Cavaliers as they are introduced. There is Colin Shetler who will be responsible for keeping the University of Pacific off the board. Henry Kessler, another of the outstanding Cavs. You may well know this team comes in with very high expectations. They are coming off of a, a season in which they continue to build upon the foundation that has built a seven-time national championship program here in Charlottesville. It's the 76th season in UVA history. This is the seventh straight year in which this moment happened, as you see DK introduced there, followed by Nathaniel Crofts. On down the line, it goes. Cozy Danasano. All these Cavaliers being introduced to the fans as we speak. And again, this a special moment as it's the seventh straight season that the Cavaliers have opened at home. And if history is any indication, we may be in for a good one tonight. Every opener since 2010 decided by a single goal. Three of those requiring extra time along the way. Now, Virginia would like to make a little quicker work of their friends from the West Coast, but only time will tell for this program, which dates back to 1941. They were a few years off during World War II, but add it all up, and this is the beginning of the 76th season of UVA soccer. The first ever meeting, however, between University of the Pacific and the Hoos. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, it is between a pair of NCAA tourney teams from a year ago. Game two of our doubleheader night from Faulkner Stadium here on the ACC Network, just about set to get underway. Adam Reeves in his first contest, the, the new era set to begin. Nationwide search was done after former head coach Ryan Jordan left to take the post at UCLA. And Adam Reeves with a strong Division II background as well as some time, in fact, over a decade at Cal State Fullerton, getting the nod to lead these Tigers into battle. And as you well know, George Gelnovich right here in Charlottesville, he has made this quite a home entering his 24th season. Longest tenured coach now in program history here at his alma mater. He led the team to the 2009 and 2014 titles. And under Coach Galinovich, they are 17 and 6 in openers. This team having secured at least 15 wins nine times under his direction, including that team record 19 win campaign back in 2009 when they hoisted the trophy. It's under his watch, a lot of professional players having cut their teeth. And he looks to make this a year to remember with his nationally ranked Cavaliers coming in and ready to roll. All the summer anticipation, all the workouts and preparation in the spring, and it comes down to the kickoff that in just a few moments is going to be taken by Tariq Branch, and that will get things underway. He's standing in the heart of the circle for Pacific, and you see the break of the huddle. 
Cozy down uh, Sano is there in the midst of things for Virginia. And the moment these fans have been waiting for. They've lined up on the hillside with blankets and turned it into the kind of Friday night that you dream about. And here at 22 minutes past the hour of 8 o'clock. And temperature now dipping into the, the high 70s since we checked it just prior to kickoff. Had 84 degrees as the warm-ups were taking place. It's now a comfortable 78 here in the heart of the Commonwealth. And at that temperature and at that time, 22 minutes after 8 p.m. Eastern, the 2019 season of Cap Soccer is underway. And Virginia playing with a University of the Pacific team that tried to go to work themselves right away. Anthony Orendane working to the verge of the attacking third, but no further. Alan Shuttler in goal for the Cavaliers. He is in his red shirt junior campaign. There's Middleburg, Virginia products. Bill Chris Shuttler, Callan Shuttler on the roster, hailing from Middleburg, and he's under the spotlight as he starts the effective work in goal for UVA. On the other side between the post, Ethan Bonre, another returner with an outstanding. 2018 campaign under his belt, really holding things down in between the posts last season for this University of Pacific team. In the down the stretch games, the, the ones that, that mattered in that NCAA tournament run. And so a couple of familiar faces to the fans of both these programs will be in goal to, to get things going this time around. There you saw Shuttler for a moment. A tackle and a whistle on the far side. Down on the turf, Andreas Eulen will pop back up pretty quickly. Again, I'll be working with it. And a little more of, of a posture of defense on this side as these two teams fill one another out in the midfield right away. And there's Ryan Hur fighting for every inch of real estate near the top of the 18. Able to dribble out, kick a pass to Orin Day. Cross to the middle, an attempt to set up the header for Branch, but it was not meant to be. Schulter in close proximity to this early attack from University of the Pacific. All academic. major who is in goal for UVA and you think in terms of his knowledge of this game and certainly love him as a leader in there between the post the, the IQ for this sport extremely high and, and maybe put to the test again as it has been the University of the Pacific on the attack Tigers have had possession early in this one First look in the direction of Shelton, but that comes all the way near flag. Where it's gathered up by Reyes. And now here's Rewind in the middle. Pushing it deep. UVA sets up a wall, lets that simply work its way back. Kessler was there to provide the pick, and Shuttler will play it short right back to Kessler. Rick Kessler, of course, the junior out of the Empire State, out of New York, New York, no less. Under at 6'4", 185 coming into this 2019 season. And you're trying to mount their first challenge. Player with open real estate down there was... Nathaniel Cross, but they couldn't push it through to it. That's okay. We'll take a look at it from the very near side. It goes all the way. Gathered up well shy of the touchline on the far side. Fame Funa was in the mix for a moment. And now, Virginia fans 
wanting the whistle in the box. It's not to be, and that's saved away by Bondre. Bondre last to touch it, so here comes the first opportunity for Virginia. Corner kick coming. There's another look at what sent Danaciano to the turf and left him begging for a whistle that was not to be. Virginia gets the chance nonetheless. Fans making their presence known. And the corner is taken over there by who else? Joe Bell. Nothing over the middle as that sails high. Well, Joe Bell, the captain of this team, his return a key. Virginia's representative on the first ever ACC watch list that was put out prior to the season. He was a second teamer. One of only a couple of Cavs to play every minute last season. And you expect him to be just as important this time around. And it really was the return of Joe Bell that set the expectations extremely high. Captain his New Zealand team and grabbed some attention a number of places in the spring had a chance to, to play professionally as we'll get into before this one is done tonight turned it all down because of his belief that this was a Virginia squad that could go the distance that could perhaps uh, hang another banner fly another flag here in Charlottesville this season only time will tell whether those beliefs whether that faith is rewarded but one thing is for sure Having Bell back, a, a major piece to the puzzle for Coach Gail Novus, his staff, and, and this team. It was Kessler fighting for it, and it's out off of UVA, so the corner coming for the Tigers to be taken by Aralambas. And that's going to be straight to Shuttler, who leaps up into the air and brings it down. Alan Shuttler led the ACC in saves percentage in 2018, 0.796 the total. Eye-popping numbers. They expect him to pick up right where he left off. Here we go. Mitchin, Chris Shuttler now on the roster. Grad transfer from Binghamton. Of note. Just in terms of the, of the makeup of this squad has six natives of the Commonwealth, by far the most of any of the other states that are represented here in the U.S., a trio of players from New York, a trio of players from Massachusetts, and then one from seven other states to go along with the six from the Commonwealth. Twelve international players against the 16 from the United States coming together to make up the roster for UVA. A couple of the products of England and 11 other countries represented solo on this squad put together for 2019. Coming to the season, as we said, with high expectations, but, but facing a team that may be flying under the radar just a little bit for teams out here on the East Coast, and maybe for those of you watching at home, this is a University of Pacific squad that defeated Stanford a year ago. Their marquee victory coming in a game uh, against the Cardinal. They're showing what type of prowess they have and ability they have for the big moment at the time the three-time defending national champion defeated in Palo Alto no less which ended their streak at 21 games at the time it had been 362 days nearly a year since Stanford had been beaten 376 days since they had been beaten at home over a year they had gone to penalties in 17 against Stanford and made it pay on September 20th of 2018 when they took down the Cardinal as their marquee moment of what would be a tournament-bound season. 
was sort of impressive so far. Well, the way they have handled the early minutes on the road after a long journey here to Charlottesville. It's a team that outscored its opponents by a count of 30 goals to 21 allowed in that 2018 season. But again, it's Ryan Jordan moving on to the high profile location of UCLA. Remember, it was Jordan who, who had restarted the program. This is a, a team in only its sixth year back. Yes, they've made three straight postseason appearances, but it was a 29 year hiatus, almost three decades without men's soccer. Before in 2014, everything was jump started by Ryan Jordan. Paid dividends for the University of the Pacific, and it's paid dividends for Jordan, who has now handed the baton to Adam Reeves. Reeves selected after a full national search was done. He had led the Cal Poly Pomona Broncos to back to back NCAA Division II semifinal appearances in 17 and 18. That was after taking over for current UC Irvine coach. Yancy Rasu had led them to the 2015 championship and a 4-0 defeat at the hands of Pfeiffer. So he, he went from one of the, the better, more consistent D2 programs in the country to a squad that, yes, though they are freshly restarted, have been a major piece of the, the college soccer landscape over the last several years. And that whistle is not going to be the liking of Who's fans here is it's going to go against Steedman and set up the Tigers on this change of possession. There's Jose and Hell Reyes. Virginia closing up the passing lanes and not allowing entrance toward the top of the 18. Ryan Hare on the far side. That's out, throw in coming for the Tigers. We'll talk about doing the best under the circumstances of, of re-upping a program and having immediate impact. That's the story of the specific Tiger squad. And they haven't just made it to the NCAA tournament the last several years. They've won their opening round games. team that went 430 and one in the first two seasons back and since have hosted and won three opening round games in the NCAA tournament what kind of contact over there on the far side and that looks like it's going to require a stoppage is very slow to get up over there is Axel Gunnarsson and a yellow card is going to be assessed so Villa Padoa right there pleading his case. But the yellow card after the collision with Gunnarsson. The first caution of this contest has been assessed. A couple of shots early for Virginia. Nothing for, for Pacific, though the Tigers have held the ball in the attacking third on the Virginia side more regularly, really, than, than what the Cavaliers have been able to put anything together. Assessing things and working it down into the top of the six where the header will be gathered up by Bondre. And everything will reset. Just over 10 minutes into this one. No score in the opening match of the year. Referee in this one tonight, Tad Levac, with assistant referees Brad Wilson and the other AR Anthony Walford. Taking care of things technically. Chuck Ackerman, who's completing our group of officials and assistance to our referee tonight.
Kwame Funa getting ready to take the throw-in chance for UVA. What can they do with his set piece? It's reacted on, and a header as Orin Dane tried to win the ball. Now he pleads his case. As UVA will be granted the chance to reset once again. Kessler, pretty good punch on it with the left foot. A little slow to get back up after being taken down is Daryl DK. It's DK in his sophomore season out of Edmond, Oklahoma, one of those key forwards for Virginia coming into the year. Okay. Five goals and an assist uh, a year ago. He's one of the guys that they talk about the improvement that, that he has made. See number nine in the thick of things before all is said and done here. He's out front a little bit now. And Joe Bell worked it to him. In fact, Joe Bell's going to have to work it off of a member of that Tigers squad. And here's a header that flicks it toward the corner. And that prevented the goal kick, or the corner kick, I should say, that time. And sets up a simple throw in for UVA. Talking about DK, who you saw there in the middle of things in the last couple of sequences, traveled to Germany this summer for training that the staff really praised as a boost to his development. A real learner, dropped about 12 pounds to get himself lean and ready to go. So keep an eye on number nine for Virginia in this one. Doesn't have a window to sneak in there behind that cross to the middle, and the offsides negates it anyway. But he has been a factor for Virginia already in his career, and they expect him to be that even more so here in 2019. One third of this first half gone. Three shots all belonging to Virginia, two of them on goal. And those are the numbers that have been secured. Both teams with an opportunity from the corner each. Four fouls called on the Tigers to just one assess to, to UVA thus far. When you talk in terms of the physical nature of this match as these two teams kind of fill one another out and what is the opener of the men's season here on the ACC Network from Charlottesville. U of the Pacific taking on 12th ranked Virginia. Red Halsey assessing the situation. He is a sophomore out of right here in the Commonwealth, out of Sterling, Virginia. Potomac Falls, where he played his prep soccer. Put things up a bit on the far side, the Tigers. Dead by Kessler over there, and it's going to eventually give Shuttler some options. Tempted takeaway. Afame Funa wanted the foul call, didn't get it. That's okay. Steedman has possession now. That's going to work its way right through the six and well out of the reach of everybody, including. Bondre, who is set to take care of the goal kick. Specific team eliminated by an ACC squad in Duke in the second round of the NCAA tournament last season. It was a 1-0 loss in Durham after defeating UC Riverside. That was a game that they were supposed to host, but the match had to be moved to Fresno because of air quality conditions. You may remember the California wildfires were going on and, and those Northern California wildfires forcing movement of the game to Fresno and, and regardless of the impact the wildfires had on the game. University of Pacific able to win their first round game before running into those problems against the Blue Devils in Durham. One of the perennial programs in the ACC. They're coming off of a, a friendly against Stanford. Somewhat of a rematch, though it doesn't count in the books of that biggest of the wins they had a year ago. 
one nothing was the final on that one. A one nil settler of their exhibition slate. Interesting communication there before everything was, was sorted out and eventually taken by Rico Contreras. Tigers making sure they're on the same page here. Impressive. Tackle there. Not far off the midfield circle right there at that trademark Virginia logo. But it results in nothing but back and forth here. And perhaps impeded by his own man. Provides a chance for the pass to, to be intercepted. And thinking he was going to get the foul call. Virginia's control man ends up letting it sit idle. And now voices being raised on both sides with some simple discontent for the way things unfolded here in the last several moments. Down to 25 minutes remaining in what has been an entertaining first half, back and forth between these teams in terms of possession of the ball. But in an effort to win the ball in the midfield for the most part, only three shots have been taken and they all belong to Virginia. Even though the early attack belonged to the Tigers of the University of Pacific. Virginia having slowed things substantially now. When you talk about NCAA tournament appearances, who has been more effective in that department than Virginia? 38 straight NCAA tourney appearances, and that is the longest streak in the history of college soccer. And this is a team that is almost assured of making it 39 in a row. The question is, can they turn it into what would be an eighth championship? They certainly have the pieces in place to be in the conversation throughout the course of the season, starting 2019, ranked in, in the top 15 at, at number 12 in the country. And, and 12th, they're ranking in the United Soccer Coaches Poll. Virginia was at 13th in the College Soccer News Poll. Another heavy collision, just as it looks as if Virginia's gonna get something going, and they will be the beneficiary of the call here, as the Cavaliers will have a set piece to do something with, and here's how they earned it. Just finishing up, TopTourSoccer.com had them at 15th in the country, so they're in the top 15 in all major polls. One of the better chances for Virginia coming here. At least thus far. Robin Afame Funa going to stand there. Uh, And not alone, is it just a, another moment's communication is taken. He will take it with a left-footed effort as expected. Comes back his direction. Some players trying to win the ball with a header and it will stay with Virginia. They are raising that flag to the delight of Cavs fans. Get of this throw in from Cross. That's a footwork from Steedman there. Goal look, but that's going to sell way wide to the right side. They provide a little bit of a gas for just an instant. Seeing an opening and trying to capitalize from some distance. The Tigers gave it a look. One corner kick apiece. shots for Virginia to the one just taken by Pacific, the only of the game for the Tigers. A couple of saves having been secured already by Ethan Bandry. And a 
quick throw in for the Tigers. Not much open real estate near the box and certainly in the interior of it for either side. What you've seen the last couple of moments, really the, the story of the match for the most part. Now this is going to get out front. Chasing it down is Reyes. He'll take a shot. But Shuttler is equal to the task. Now you look across the Virginia schedule, you, you think about that a great deal on a night like tonight when they open against the NCAA tournament participant from a year ago and an opponent to, to get things started. They'll play six teams ranked in the preseason. Top 25 and four of them in the top 10 before the season is done. So they'll be battle tested on nights much like tonight. After the foul. Virginia quickly. Toward Gunnarsson, who has checked time and again. Steedman and the shot taken from this side of the box. Axel Gunnarsson is trying to make something happen. Freshman out of Sweden. First year here at UVA. Talk about those highly ranked opponents that, that Virginia will tackle. There are some marquee names on the schedule. They'll have the usual suspects in the ACC, North Carolina, Notre Dame, Duke, all at 6th, 9th, and 10th in the country, respectively, entering the year. But they'll play number one Maryland. that renewed classic between two of the old ACC foes. So you'll find out pretty quickly just what this team is made of. That came on September 2nd, right around the corner. Back at Audi Field in D.C., Battle of the DMV, after a scoreless draw in the first collegiate contest ever played there a year ago. They will renew that rivalry. And it's a good thing for college soccer. The Terrapins and the Hoos had not squared off since the Terps left the ACC back in 2013. But having a game like that, it being a, a top-ranked squad and a highly-ranked Virginia team makes the stakes uh, that much more higher. But when you think about the historic and traditional rivalry between those two programs, that's enough. This goes up into the seats, going to wake some of the fans up in there. As the response you heard is we had a couple of fans not quite prepared. Everybody seems to be okay. And that goes across the touchline and stays on this end with the Tigers. The other two teams out of those six, by the way, that are in the Preseason top 25, Louisville at 14, and of course, Virginia Tech, whose main rivals from over in Blacksburg, 16th in the country for Virginia Tech to start the year. A little pushing and shoving going on in the left portion of your screen there, and a referee having to step in once again. Remember, he's already assessed the yellow card to Villa Padoa. He's having to separate a couple of players at the top of the six, and he's going to stop play and continue this conversation. Most of his words going to the star player for Pacific, Jonathan Jimenez. And Afame Funa, who is right there alongside. Boy, big time pain at the top of the 18 is flying in there and looking for a lane through which to shoot. Jonathan Rico Contreras. It appeared. Took 
something to the shin there. Good news is he's up and is going to be able to continue, it would appear. Corner kick coming. Arilambos to take it for Pacific. He'll play it just inside the box, and a try to feed back to him goes beyond the goal line, so it will be Virginia's. You see the communication from Arilambos after that. Boy, trying to keep his balance. And hard to the turf as contact is made with him. Afame Funa gets up only to see what Virginia fans have been hoping for, and that's a yellow card assist. To Jonathan Jimenez, no less. Well, it's important that they calm Jimenez and keep him in this thing. You see what caused the assessment of the yellow. That's the second caution having been handed out. The first to Villapadoa, and now this one to Jimenez. Much for the referee to keep track of in this one. And why it is important to, to keep Jimenez out there? Well, he's second team all West Coast Conference. Had 21 total points as a junior, eight goals, five assists, tying for the team lead in assists. So he's their returning leader, top returning player when it comes to shots. He had 32 of them along the way. And four game-winning goals last year, including the Stanford game. And he nearly had a goal against Duke on a header that went just high that would have equalized uh, that contest that eventually went the Blue Devils' direction and ended the Tigers' season. So Jimenez, he, he is the star player the lone preseason all-conference selection in the WCC for Pacific that one would think must be out there on the pitch for the Tigers to be successful here today. So a big developing story, the yellow card he just received. Left-footed into a crowded box, enough Cavaliers there to clear it. Numbers very much against DK up there. And it's going to be settled down by Rico Conteras. You look at the two standout players, Jonathan Jimenez, easily your, your player to kind of keep an eye on on the one side. And Joe Bell, who we talked about, opted to return, gave this team quite a lift when he did. The, the player you watch on the Cavs side of things coming in, one would think. Had a goal, but what he does is a distributor. What he does is a leader. Second on the team with five assists in 18. He, Many who followed him will know Captain New Zealand in the FIFA under 20 World Cup that took place in Poland. Had a nice showing in that FIFA under 20 World Cup back in the spring and ended up turning down a pro contract. He received a great deal of interest in Norway and decided instead to return to the delight of the UVA faithful. Only representative, well, there was one representative to be clear about that from each team on the first ever released ACC watch list, and it was Joe Bell, one of two captains on this squad for Virginia, the other captain. Of course, we've called his name a lot tonight. Afame Funa. Holds things down on that final line of events. DK right there is Jose Angel Reyes is now over to handle the throw in. Just couldn't get it through to Orin Dane. The Tigers have tried, still looking to even up. Virginia in the shots department. A couple of them having been notched for the Tigers to three and the only two that have been on goal in this contest that belong to Virginia. But 
This one now in the 33rd minute. And the Cavaliers facing one of the better opportunities for the Tigers here on a set piece that while it is from distance, will be sent right down at the top of the six. Directly at Shuttler there. That rolls the line as if it was on a rail and ends up across the touch line. Substitutions getting set to take place for Pacific, both. Kami saw Sanuki standing by, and it looks as if Kai Lang is also going to get a look here in the next several moments. Those two standing at the ready for the Tigers. Personnel grouping for Virginia having held steady in this first half. Good bend, and it was crossed right in there into striking distance. Finish just eluding Jonathan Jimenez. Jimenez, eight goals and five assists, tied for the team lead in that assist department a year ago. He was a top drawer soccer national player of the week and two time West Coast Conference player of the week a year ago. He's going to come off now. They'll be without him for the next several moments. And those two individuals we talked about just a moment ago. Kai Lang. And also. Mo Kamaso Sansanuki also in there. Kamaso Sansanuki out of Long Beach, California. And Lang, a freshman, making his way to the University of the Pacific out of Tokyo, Japan. So the Tigers holding their own in this first half as we dip under 10 minutes to play in the initial period. Very similar to the way they played in the NCAA tournament the last time. They laced up the boots in that second round tournament game against the Blue Devils in Durham. So far, the early returns. That are coming in on the Adam Reeves era. Very good. The man who had under his tutelage a trio of Division II All-Americans. We talked about his solid D2 background. And now he also was an 03 graduate himself of Cal State Fullerton. Seeing this sport at a high level at a number of different stops. Assistant for 12 years at Cal State Fullerton. Smothered up. This look goes right to Shuttler who dives on top of it. A fourth shot for the Tigers. They take the lead in that category. Plus one advantage now in the shots department for Pacific, even if things stay nil-nil on the scoreboard. Not only talking about Reeves finishing up on his bio, played at Cal State Fullerton, also at Washington in the late 90s as well. So you talk about seeing this game at a high, high level. speaks volumes the way they feel about him to give him the keys there at Knowles Field at the University of Pacific Virginia thought they were going to get a chance to clean one up there but offsides the call and well before Gunnarsson could load up and fire away possession goes back to the Tigers
Pacers. If you're not familiar with the University of Pacific, it's located in Stockton, California, Northern California, roughly 7,000 students for the black and orange. They were a founding member of the West Coast Conference, left it for a while, and then returned. And their claim to fame, the oldest chartered university in California. Three campuses, San Francisco, Sacramento, and then, of course, Stockton. Their claim to fame here tonight, they are holding their own with the Cavaliers. Foul is called. We'll hand it to Virginia. The Hoos have about seven minutes remaining in this first half if they're going to carry any type of lead into the intermission. It's the season opener and the tune-up ahead of the highly anticipated battle with Maryland in the nation's capital. That will cap this Labor Day weekend. What a move. Shot from distance outside the 18 to look. That man right there, Ethan Bondre, has been good so far. Maybe at his best in that moment. Just a handful of minutes away from the end of the first period. In that scenario, Benaciano getting the, the better of UVA's looks on what is the fourth shot. And things get physical in the middle of the field once again. And who's in the thick of it but Daryl DK once more. Everything held up with 534 remaining in the first half. Four shots apiece. Three of the four on goal for Virginia, just one of that variety for the Tigers. Three saves for Bondre, only one required of Shuttler so far. Foul's pretty even, and this is a number that is going to give you a sense of how physical this game has been between two teams that appeared in the NCAA tournament a year ago and have visions on getting back there and doing damage once more. Seven fouls against the Tigers, six fouls against the Hoos. Wahoo keeper, Shuttler, puts a strong foot into it. Decision-making to come on out and punch that away. A couple of corners for the Tigers to one for UVA, and three offsides calls all against the Hoos so far. Speaks to some of the opportunities they didn't quite capitalize on and it didn't quite maybe materialize in the end. Joe Bell over to Andreas Ulan. Norwegian. Another of those newly introduced international products in his freshman campaign. 6'4", 185. What, of course, he has the potential to be in the middle. Here's a shot. Swatted up and away. Boy, Steedman wanted a good look a few moments ago. The Cavs get one here. And it's going to be a corner after this. Steedman had it headed in the direction he wanted. But that was vintage Ethan Bondre. Lock dips under four minutes remaining, first half. Inside flag arm. The header from the Tigers. And there's a second. You semi clear it. And Virginia's. Great scoring opportunity on that fifth shot and then the set piece that followed. Start turning into anything right away. That spin move there. Pretty impressive from Ryan Herb. A little hop, skip, and a jump to get away. And all kind of open real estate on the far side for the Tigers. The cross anticipated. And shot right out of there by UVA. Pressure that the Tigers have put on the Cavaliers in the opening stages of this game. And now here in the closing stages of the first half, 
Nothing short of impressive. And a shot taken by Kai Lang that again will be taken care of by Colin Shuttler who with a couple of saves has done just that shut the door for the Cavaliers in this first half of what remains a scoreless match. Both teams mixing it up a bit filling one another out. But both goalkeepers tested in certain moments and equal to the task have been the dominant forces in this match thus far. It's away from Danasiano momentarily and chases it down the far side just shy of the touch line over there. Fancy footwork to get inside the 18. Can't shake the defender's mark though. Rattles around off a couple of bodies, and here's a shot that will find the back corner of the net. Little cleanup duty, and it is Danasiano who has the first Virginia goal of the year. They celebrate the junior out of Roanoke, Irakazi Danasiano. Unable to get it on first look. But he hung around and cleaned it up going far side post just inside it for a 1-0 advantage. And it comes with just over 90 seconds remaining. In the first half, Virginia scores in the 44th minute for the lead. toe-to-toe -to -toe in this first half. Now we'll need something to equalize in the final 80 seconds here. To avoid reaching the intermission suddenly behind. And that goal getting the crowd into it. The first Virginia goal of the year. Coming in the 44th minute of the season. 43-22, the time on the clock. As Virginia gets on the board, 43-22 into this one. And now the final half minute. Will it prove fruitful for the Tigers? Able to bend it right into the grasp of Shuttler. That was a beautiful look from Ryan Hur. And Shuttler's facial expression tells you everything. He lays on top of it to cover up the precious quantity that is that soccer ball and hold on to the one nil advantage as Virginia ten, nine, heads into the eight, final 10 seconds seven, of the season six, opener. Five, well, four, these two teams three, having never met, two, putting on a pretty good show and a physical and entertaining first half of action. That sees the Cavaliers on the strength of a goal from Irakazi Danasiano take a 1 0 advantage into the break. And it gets a little testy as the two teams get ready to head for the locker rooms. We talked about how physical it was in this first half, and you saw at the very end that ball kicked away and up beyond the berm over toward the new softball facility at the end of this half. Words were exchanged following, maybe a little more than words, but our referee and the ARs as well right there to sort it all out and send these teams to their respective corners. They got a lot of fighting left to do, but it's out on the pitch. 45 minutes still left to settle this one. Virginia leads at the break by a count of one nothing. Commonwealth, where else can you come out on a 
Friday night. Experienced 76 degree weather. Surrounded by friends and neighbors and witness the start of the season for the 12th ranked team in the country after watching a third consecutive victory to open the season by the women's team, the sixth ranked team in the country. It is high times here on the grounds at the University of Virginia. Both these programs ranked in the top 15 in the country, playing a double header tonight, and the men are trying to finish off what the ladies started a little bit earlier with a 4-0 victory. It's 1-0 in favor of the Hoos as we get set to begin the second half of action. The University of the Pacific Tigers and the Virginia Cavaliers back out on the pitch, and the final 45 in this one perhaps underway. This is a Pacific team that has made it a habit of playing extra time, especially when they face big time opponents like they are tonight here on the road at Clockner Stadium. And separated by just one goal, that's certainly not out of the question at the moment. Pacific put on a pretty good show early, but it was Virginia late, and here are the Cavaliers with another look. And that's going to result in a PK for the Cavs on which they can double their lead. Hard pressed to get away with that kind of contact without the referee stepping in. This has been a physical match. We saw a little bit of a tussle back and forth between the two teams as they departed the pitch for the intermission. And our referee going to come over and ask for a little assistance from his AR on this side. yellow card the third of this match having been assessed now after that brief discussion and this has become somewhat of a familiar refrain at times tonight the pleading of the case following the assessment of the yellow card here in the 46th minute even more importantly right now for Virginia. Robin Afame Funa is going to take the PK. And it is handled. Ethan Bowdere, who already had secured four saves through the first 45 minutes of action, stands up again. Beautiful anticipation. And it's Bonre who wins the round, but a corner kick coming. As UVA's opportunity will continue here. Enter into the top of the six. And all the way to the far post. And right here on the near side, a look for a brief moment for Axel Gunnarsson that was not to be. Virginia, the 12th ranked team in the country. Talked about watching two highly ranked teams here if you're a Hoos fan tonight. And those of you wherever you may be found all around the ACC network. This is a Virginia team ranked 12th, experiencing its highest ranking to open the season since 2015 when they were coming off the most recent of their seven national championships. As reigning champions, they were ranked number two in the country. This. 12th ranking, the highest since. They're picked to finish second in the Coastal Division of the ACC. Great deal of contention up at the top of the 18, and it's eventually cleared out of there by the Tigers. ACC coaches. Also, any Virginia, one of only four votes for the outright championship. Or one of only four teams, I should say, receiving votes for the outright championship. Virginia getting a single vote. Wake Forest and Duke with North Carolina tallying the other nine first place votes when you look at the big picture in the ACC. They line up in the Atlantic like this, according to the coaches. Wake, Louisville, Syracuse, NC State, Clemson, and then BC. And in the Coastal, North Carolina, followed by Virginia, Duke, Virginia Tech, Notre Dame, and then Pitt. Working near the post, able to feed. 
Who else? But Denasiano again for the finish. And that feed was from Daryl DK, and it was a very impressive delivery. And as a multi-goal scorer, Denasiano has doubled the Virginia lead. Here's the feed from DK. And Denasiano lying in wait, making it 2-0. Filling the energy here at Clockner Stadium. Got all the many moments on this pitch for this Virginia team. And there is a great deal of anticipation coming into this season. When you talk about that high ranking we were just discussing, the expectations in the ACC, the way this team played in its friendlies, the way it prepared in the offseason. Pieces that are there that are in place. And here's Pacific trying to counter with a quick one of their own, and that's going to go just wide of that far side post. Here's, here's another look at how close it was for the Tigers. Just maybe on a carom there almost. Now picking up their first goal of this contest. Eight shots for Virginia to six of them for Pacific. Seven on goal for the Hoos, two on goal for the Tigers. And where it counts on the scoreboard, now 2 0 UVA. Virginia patiently waiting for something to materialize so long that it's eventually taken away by Ryan Herr. And now this is going to work back to the strong right foot of Colin Shuttler. Shuttler with a pair of saves already in this contest. That opposite the five of his counterpart, Ethan Bonray. Now gets his turn to become involved once more. Danger zone to some degree for the Tigers here, but they're able to get it out of that most tedious territory. There he is again. And Asiano now has him ooing and eyeing every time he gets a touch. With good reason, scoring in the 44th minute, scoring in the 48th minute. On assists by DK each time. Gunnarsson was also credited with an assist on the first goal. So a couple of different players helping feed Danasiano that time around. And here is Gunnarsson who picked up that assist earlier. Off Jonathan Jimenez. Jimenez, the standout for Pacific. He's been left a, a bit frustrated tonight. One of three players having picked up yellow cards in this recently. Charles Grillo. The Virginia corner. Down near the top of the 18 is where Virginia has to strike it, and they'll do so beyond the goal line. So a goal kick coming for Ethan Bundre again. Andre, who shared some time with senior Mateo Gomez last year. A couple of career shutouts came in succession just ahead of the eventual 1-0 loss to Duke for Ethan Bondre, the junior out of Kansas. Battle for it in the midfield. In is tackled. As Virginia tried to win the ball. 
Gets right in there with Andreas Eulen. Ball is going to belong to Pacific. Let's see what the Tigers opt to do with it here. One of the few times they've had a chance to set something up on the Virginia side. Been quick materializing chances when they have been there for the Tigers. This is a little different. Able to survey the situation from out of the midfield. Lull this fan base and this Cavaliers team to sleep just a little bit and get him in as involved. It's a little too deep for him and Virginia clears it as a result. Remember, Jimenez, you would think, has to be in the thick of it. And tackling from behind and called for the foul. As a result, is Harold Ambas. And he's issued a yellow card. So you got four different Tigers now having been issued yellow Number cards six. in this match. You saw his reaction as it was handed down. Has been cautioned by the referee. So four cautions, and all of them on the Pacific side of things. And comes another great chance on a set piece for Virginia. find themselves just 30 yards away. Straight on look, but it sells way high. Well, tonight marking the 28th anniversary of the opening of Clocker Stadium. Virginia leading it 2 nothing on this memorable night protect that 2 nothing lead by sending it out across the touch line. What a home it has been for UVA. For the past 27 seasons, they have won 80% of their matches here. 284 wins against just 58 losses and 27 draws as this shot sells way high. They open on August 30th, 1992, an exhibition against Santa Clara, a team from out west no less team from the West Coast Conference, no less, in front of 6,142. Pretty good crowd here tonight as well. Some 28 years later. And there is Jimenez once again. Jimenez has had his moments for Pacific. First hat trick in the modern era, obviously six years into that era since the return of a program that had a near 30-year hiatus before it was brought back by, at the time, head coach Ryan Jordan, who just departed for UCLA, handing the baton to Adam Reeves. Three goals in three minutes and 12 seconds in an upset of number 11, Portland. For Pacific, just a, a snapshot of what he can do. You see why they continue to try to work it to him. Here's a look for Virginia. Got away for just a moment, having to steady it. And getting a second look is Virginia, but it won't go either. Maybe the best one in there was Daryl DK's effort. Look at it right here. And on the rebound for DK, Crofts tried it, and it wouldn't go either. Sailed way high. You look back at Danasiano having to, to make an extra effort to gather that up before he could get a clear line on goal a moment ago, and, and that may have been when that opportunity slipped away. Virginia keeping the attack on, and you can see how Daryl DK has ratcheted up the intensity personally just a little bit here in the second half. Talked about how he had, had dropped just over 10 pounds, a little leaner coming back this year, spent some time in Germany training to improve his game. 
love the adjustments he has made and he has thrown himself right in the thick of things here in the second half. Halsey steps away as Joe Bell gets ready to take this. ACC watch list player. He returner. New Zealand puts a foot into it. A header clears for Pacific. And Jimenez has been quiet in this game as Pacific tries to put a push together. Started all but one game last year. He missed the regular season finale against Gonzaga after picking up his fifth yellow card the season of the game prior so you see how things have transpired here today for Pacific and that's the only reason that their star player has not been involved is going back to that frozen tundra game against Gonzaga when he was unable to play against the Zags substitution UK comes off and Philip Horton coming in for UVA. Cavs had had that familiar personnel grouping for the most part. Now turning to Philip Horton to work some key minutes here as we work our way toward the, the closure of the first third of this second half, a second half that has seen Virginia double its lead with a goal in the 48th minute. Denisiano, who scored the first in the 44th minute. And this is out front to Gunnarsson again. And Gunnarsson crosses to the middle and losing his footing on an attempt to get in there and make good work of it. Was the newly entered, the fresh legs of Philip Horton. Of course, Horton. Coming to Virginia by way of New Albany, Ohio, and this is his first year on the grounds. There's Horton. Nobody home except for Ethan Bonre, who gathers this up. Horton, one of eight freshmen. You see cramps having to be worked out up near the midfield and the training staff at least that would appear to be the case here Let's see if we can get a look at exactly what happened here as they're going to stop things and tend to the injured player eight true freshmen six sophomores nine juniors four seniors and one graduate student so a lot of as they're termed here at UVA first years heavy first year and third year presence on this team and one of the many that uh, are expected to make a major contribution coming in and seeing some key minutes here Play stopped with 31 minutes, 18 seconds remaining in the contest. As Brett Halsey was being tended to, but he's up and ready to go again. Had been a hot day here in the Commonwealth and pulling off a little this evening, but early the season. Brett Halsey the Cavaliers, number you're going to end up with some of that along the way. With Halsey coming off, Aaron James redshirt junior out of Amherst Massachusetts will enter the match to see some time Gunderson a strong foot in it. lady Graff working together along with Cooper Riley and if the name Riley sounds familiar In terms of the Pacific Tigers, it should. 
Cooper Riley, the sophomore. And the Dallas, Texas, and Flower Mound High School now in. And here's another Cavalier down. And it's Denasiano who has the two goals for Virginia in the match. And a number of fans here on the near side. having witnessed what has been a very physical match to the tune of four yellow cards already. None too happy with seeing their multi-goal scorer be shoved to the ground here. And coach George Gelnovich, the 24-year head coach of the Cavaliers, stepped out across the touchline with something to say to our referee. And you can almost be sure it related to the protection of his players. And now he's, he's walking over and talking to the AR while the referee opts to go with the yellow card. Virginia fans, and it looks like the Virginia head man wanting a little more. So a fifth yellow card in this contest having been assessed this one to Ryan Herr joining an, an ever-growing group of Tigers that have forced the stoppage of play here and been provided a caution Joe Bell getting ready to put things back in action to provide the reset. You know, just before that latest contact, and This newest opportunity for Virginia. Cavaliers were on the move once more. That's in traffic and it's eventually going to be cleared away. Pacific looking for daylight. There will be none. And that's going to be against the Tigers wrapping that arm as he was trying to create some open space. In an attempt to go on the attack, that one goes against Jonathan Rico Contreras. Well, what the Pacific is having to try and do, play some of the, the key pieces from their tournament run a year ago. That goes all the way through. Maybe. Tigers possession once again. Called the name just a few minutes ago of Cooper Riley and the most noticeable absence on this year's team. Obviously doing his part and, and moving on along as planned is the other Mr. Riley. And the big question, how would they find his offense? How would they replace his production? You look at this team, a year ago they had three first-team all-conference players. And the headliner was the West Coast Conference Player of the Year, Cameron Wiley. Riley, nine goals, five assists. Rewrote the school record books in his time there on campus at the University of the Pacific. And without Camden Riley, they're wondering, where's the leadership going to come from? Well, for Virginia, the attack continues but to the turf before he can put a good amount on it is Gunnarsson and once again Bondre there and just how good was Camden Riley well, he ended up drafted to play professionally 
after setting so many of the records there in the restart and the reboot of the program. Second round selection of Sporting Kansas City. Joining Tristan Blackman as the second Tiger ever drafted to play MLS soccer. Finding a way to, to create the production that is missing in his absence. One of the main, main pieces to the puzzle this year for this Pacific team. And not only that, they also lost Verstappen, their defensive player of the year, and the defensive player of the year in the West Coast Conference a year ago. So a couple of a glaring losses that they'll try and find a way to replace. And another substitution coming in here. It's a return of foreign day. Number 12, Spencer and he's not the only one coming in as UVA will provide Spencer Patton some playing time. Junior out of Morrisville, Pennsylvania now in there for the Cavs. So the who's getting some, some players involved, some of those role players Seeing some time now, the likes of Patton and Horton and James. Alongside the usual suspects. And you see the shots numbers beginning to trend in Virginia's direction. Here's a through that was set up very well, but at the last moment, Pacific able to dodge the bullet. Eight of the 12 Virginia shots on goal. Two nothing lead that has been in effect since the 48th minute. Both goals in this one coming from Danasiano. One of the few times Colin Shuttler has had to be involved in the last several moments. Now action taking place in the midfield. Horton, side of the net. Now Philip Horton making a bid for one. Horton introducing himself to Blues fans. Six and right at the top of it. This header is going to go above the crossbar and result in a goal kick. Look at this Virginia team. Eight of 11 starters back. 15 letter winners. Six of their top seven point scorers. Both goalkeepers back. Talented crop of second years that lead the way. 83% of their scoring, 20 of 24 goals back for UVA. I think you look no further than the words of Coach Gelnovich when he said, I, it's been years since I have entered a season with so many proven players. As Virginia has entered the season with, with this much experience on the roster. And as a result, they've got their highest ranking in the last several years at 12th in the country coming into the opener tonight. 76th season in UVA history and the seventh straight year that they open here at home at Clockner Stadium. And the fans loving every minute of it tonight. Every year since 2010, those matches have been decided by a single goal. Pacific would have to score to make that reality here tonight as Virginia leads by two with just under 24 and a half minutes to play. 23 and a half minutes, I should say, to play. Looks 
Cavaliers and the history books up and down it. They talk about the 38 straight NCAA tournament appearances, which is the all-time record in the history of college soccer. They talk about the seven national championships, the 12 college cup appearances. What's going to become of this 2019 team? Can they fly a new flag, raise a new banner, along with the many others that have been accumulated by this Virginia athletics program in recent years? Pacific on the move. Jonathan Rico Contreras. Top to Arlambas. That's. A shot with some force, had some velocity on it, but it goes way high. And what goes in the books as the eighth shot of the night for the Tigers of Pacific. It will be much too tall to put the crew out of the West Coast Conference on the board. Three of four. Freshman honorees back with this Virginia team, too. When you talk about that second year group, he was signing with Columbus Crew SC. Coming into the week, he had six MLS appearances already, so making his mark as a former member of this UVA program. As I've already documented, we talked about earlier tonight. They thought perhaps they were going to also lose Joe Bell to the professional ranks, but his return will really buoy this team in terms of their expectations. By the way, those four all freshman team selections, a record, a new record set for an ACC squad by the Wahoos a year ago. The majority of that group back. Looking good so far here in match number one of the year. 2-0 Virginia on the strength of a pair of goals. From Irikazi. Donaciano. minutes remaining if Virginia is to make those two goals stand up the multi-goal effort from the native of Roanoke's Patrick Henry high which came in the 44th and the 48th minute respectively really you look at the closing moments of the first period and the opening moments of the second period, and those are the only places for all the shots and all the efforts that any hay has been made in this contest. And all of it by the gentleman wearing that Cavalier blue and orange jersey number 11. Nathaniel Crofts and he ends up being a bit off the mark as that goes well beyond the touchline on the far side. Yeah, oh yeah. So the throw in coming for the Tigers and also coming for the Tigers, Jose Angel Reyes. It was freshly into the contest. era underway for a Pacific Tigers team in its sixth year back in the college soccer ranks. It's an interesting 
side note for you. This is only the second time in the past six years when you talk about opening up the season that Virginia has technically opened with an unranked opponent. This is a Pacific team that was receiving votes in national polls coming in, but they didn't have a specific number beside their name. Virginia with a thrilling last minute victory, as you may remember, over 15th ranked New Hampshire last year and a 3-2 extra time victory over Villanova in 2017. They've been opening up against ranked opponents and putting together thrillers over the last few seasons. So a little different in seeing a team without a number in front of their name as well. But a specific team that has played like an NCAA tournament team from a year ago. And in another nod to the physical nature of this match, this time it's a Tiger down in the form of Brady Graff after what was deemed a collision at the top of the box that will turn it over to Pacific. 15 fouls on the Tigers, 11 fouls on the Wahoos. Beautiful night here in the athletic precinct on the grounds. Shaping up to be a victorious night for both the women's team and the men's team perhaps if Virginia can hold on for another 16 and a half minutes against a pesky Tigers team out of the West Coast Conference. Talked about how the ACC lines up. The WCC in their preseason voting slated St. Mary's to win the league ahead of Portland, San Diego, Pacific coming in fourth ahead of San Francisco, Santa Clara, and then Gonzaga to round out the preseason poll. The header didn't clear it enough, but that's okay because Virginia able to run it right out of there. With some outstanding work on that back line by Joe Bell. Fighting for every inch is Horton. Trying to set up another goal for Danasiano. Tigers were having none of it this time. Worth revisiting what's up next for Virginia before we get too far into the depths of this one. And the shot is taken. Well distant shot. And Colin Shuttler with little movement required is able to receive it. Time being stopped as another Virginia player is down. Call for the training staff to work their way to the far side once again. Well, it's been a busy night. And gentlemen, as well as for the training staff here at UVA. It does give us a chance while the players catch their breath, get a little much needed water on what started off as a very warm night to walk you through the way things do shake out in terms of the schedule for the Cavaliers and certainly in terms of what's next on the horizon. This is a team that's going to play six teams in the preseason top 25 for the top 10 teams. North Carolina, Notre Dame, and Duke, you know, out of the ACC. But it's that Maryland game, circle September 2nd, which caps this Labor Day weekend. They will meet the champs back at Audi Field in D.C. Battle of the DMV. You knew there had to be another chapter after the scoreless draw in the first collegiate contest ever played there last year. So it's fitting that these two teams have not met since 
the Terrapins left the ACC. We'll go back at it once again. And a nice, nice reception for Donaciano as he works his way back to the sideline. And you might expect it because he has had a night. Both Virginia goals belonging to the young man that was just on your screen. 44th minute and 48th minute, respectively. Gunnarsson and DK assisting him on the first goal in the 44th minute. And DK also picking up an assist in the 48th minute on that goal. And here's Spencer Patton working his way across the pitch. Right. Marquee matchup coming up uh, against Maryland. Not the only one that, that you're going to be able to see in prime time, not the only one that you're going to be able to see under the bright lights of national television coverage. The September 13th game against Duke is going to be on ESPNU and then Western Michigan on September 23rd, as well as JMU on October 15th, all ACC network games. And of course, so many of the others taking place as part of the ACC network extra package. So you can keep close tabs on the Wahoos this year. ACC Network going to air 28 men's soccer games in its debut season. That's quite the slice of soccer coverage. In fact, uh, the sport of men's soccer, one of the nights that is getting a dedicated night on the ACC Network. You can look most Tuesdays and Fridays for a game and they're also going to televise the ACC postseason on the network this time around. One of the highlights, Keeper Cam, that uh, fans have come to know and love as a part of ESPN Productions of Soccer. Thirteen minutes. Thirteen. Yeah. They continue to go back and forth, and now here's Virginia putting something together again, perhaps, with 13 and a half minutes remaining. This Pacific team that took down Stanford, snapping the Cardinal. Long winning streak. It lasted just over a year at home and just under a year overall. A key moment of their year in 2018, a season that saw them go back to the NCAA tournament, win a first round game, third consecutive trip back in just six years back as a program. They have brought that show to the heart of the Commonwealth tonight. A Virginia quite a run in the first half, keeping it scoreless all the way into the 44th minute. But now the Tigers find themselves trailing by two we go into the final third of this second period. Enough disruption provided on that tackle from James there. And then trying to line up a shot that'll go just wide left outside the 18 or the Tigers. Had Shuttler on his toes, but that was just off the mark anyway. Villa Padoa back into the match. Villa Padoa, one of the starters in this contest. And comes back in place of Cooper Riley. DK also back in with fresh legs for Virginia. And it goes right to DK. Using his sizable frame at 6'2", 220, the Oklahoma native. Tried to inch out front before hearing the whistle and watching Pacific go back at it. Jimenez in the middle of that attack. Shot's going to be taken from the near side. There you see the end result. Shuttler was waiting on it once again. This 
Mississippi getting Mo. Tommy saw Sanoki involved. Virginia with a chance to set something up once more. Near side to Cross. Eulen. Still the idea of working at the Daryl DK. The backward touch. It's eventually taken away by Joe Bell. Now Villa Padoa to throw in with some distance, but it's cleared by the header of Aaron James. It's her. Nothing but the dark blue jerseys of the Virginia Cavaliers surrounding him. Look at the head of steam. And DK loses his man for a moment. Tried to play that right on through is the beneficiary of the call. Clock dips under 10 minutes remaining. So this in essence, from a location standpoint, much like a corner for UVA. It looks as if Bell is the player headed down that way to take it, and he will be. Bell just shy of the corner arc in the flag. Puts it onto the foot of DK. Like it had a chance maybe for a header from Crofts, and DK tried to kick it in, but neither of those efforts proved fruitful. 14 shots for Virginia. Now 11 shots for the Tigers. There is only a, a plus three advantage in that category for the Cavaliers. They've doubled up Pacific in terms of shots on goal at eight over four. Both goalkeepers good tonight, six saves, despite the two goals allowed by Ethan Bonnery. Four saves having been notched by Colin Shuttler along the way. 28 fouls called in this one, 17 of them against Pacific some of the key numbers as we close in on the final eight minutes of action. Nifty move by DK. He was in a 2v1 scenario. And still almost cleared it into some open space. DK having to fight hard as he's swallowed up by University of Pacific Tigers. Numbers for Pacific. Although Virginia gets back, closing quickly. Blocked off. Look at the closing speed on that last sequence for Virginia. It speaks volumes about their ability to defend. It's a Virginia team coming in. They, they want to find that consistent scoring to go along with what they know can be a smothering defensive approach. And solid play in between the posts from Colin Shuttler. Tonight scoring coming all from the same place. And orange number 11 on that dark Virginia jersey. Of the young man out of Roanoke, Virginia. two goals talking of course about Hirokazi Danasiano's two goals Three looking as if they may be enough to stand up coming into the contest now Jeremy Burley another of those freshmen he's out of Jamaica Welcome reception from the UVA fans still 
enjoying the closing moments of this match on what has been a perfect Friday night. Both in terms of weather and, and shaping up that way in terms of result for Wahoos fans, perhaps. Now that gets to Shuttler quickly enough that he can kick it out of harm's way. Pacific team, a 12-win squad from a year ago that went 5-2-0 in their conference, received an at-large bid, by the way, into the NCAA tournament and ended up hosting a first-round game. Came in with visions of pulling the upset against the 12th-ranked team in the country, and they're going to need quite the finish here to extend this match with five and change remaining in this is maybe the more violent of all. That we've seen tonight in terms of a couple of players getting tangled up. Watch this ride. And that's what it seemed to be for Brady Graff on the back of DK. The call gonna go Pacific's direction Coach George Gelnovich didn't like the way things went down there. Just a little clarification from DK as he comes over and talks to the AR on the near side. And now a yellow card is going to be assessed. So sixth yellow card of the night, first five of them being assessed. to the Tigers of Pacific. And the caution this time is being handed down to the Virginia bench. And no specific player there, but the, the bench as a whole. And that technical area for Virginia drew the attention of the referee. And has kept quiet tonight. Season all conference player for the Tigers. And we have seen impact up and down the roster for UVA. This is a night in which they capitalized on two of 14 chances from a shots perspective. Question, can they add more across the final four and change? Looking for DK again. All right to the defender instead. And just as it leaves the foot of Jonathan Rico Contreras. Foul called. Another caution assist. So when you look at the stat sheet on this one, when all is said and done, it's going to be full of cautions. No ejections in this one. But the yellow card being assessed to Jeremy Verley, the first individual player to be assessed to caution alongside of the Virginia bench on the Wahoo side of things. Boy, those passing lanes, the, the shooting windows, they all close up very quickly. No room for even the through ball. Because the shots, at, at least in, in point blank range, have been almost impossible and with any Real manageable look whatsoever have been hard to come by. And that's Virginia men's soccer. Has been for a long, long time. Pacific trying to put together a charge in the final three minutes. And they get on the board. 
this the Friday night opener of the men's soccer season from here in Charlottesville. It's our pleasure to have you with us all on our ACC Network Extra crew here at Clockner Stadium. What is two minutes, 40 seconds away? Virginia can hang on to this 2-0 advantage from being a, a very memorable night in the Commonwealth. Here's DK. What a chest it. For the strong right foot of Aaron James. Connects with Spencer Patton. Virginia after the foul call. With a set piece up near the midfield line. Well, from the time they kicked it off in center circle, this match required every bit of energy these two teams had. It was physical from the get go, as evidenced by those six yellow cards having been assessed to the players in this match. That's what's required when you go toe to toe between NCAA tournament teams like these two and knowing what's ahead in the fight for them in their respective conferences. The journey gets no easier moving forward. But for Virginia, they took care of their business tonight. by not allowing anything to Pacific on the scoreboard and doing just enough offensively themselves. As we head into this final minute to try to make the two nothing final stand up. In the 76th season in Virginia history in a seven straight home opener. Trending Wahoo's direction the seven-time national champs and a team having made their mark on the college soccer scene with 38 straight NCAA tournament appearances have taken the first step toward making it 39 in a row and turning 2019 into one of those memorable years here in Charlottesville as they await the final few seconds ticking off the clock to make it official. Speaking of official, our officials here tonight, very busy. Another caution having been assessed down in the corner. It comes with 16.2 seconds and creates a set piece from just outside the 18 yard box. Let's see if Pacific can steal away a late goal here. Shuttler directing traffic as this goes straight at him. And it's kicked out of there by DK in the end. And that will set the shutout in effect. Virginia is going to open the season. 1-0 on the strength of a 2-0 victory over a University of the Pacific Tigers team that appeared in the NCAA tournament a year ago. Tonight's hero for the Virginia Cavaliers, an easy one to pick, Irikazi Danasiano, securing both of Virginia's goals. He did so on assist by Gunnarsson and DK. On the first goal of the 44th minute, it came at 40 